And one of the things we will go on Facebook Live, this, we're also recording this uh, virtual workshop. So if any of y'all are interested in watching any of the, you can go to Amos Houston in Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Yeah. Oh. Go ahead and mute yours, but I think it's going to give okay. you feedback. Okay. All right. Good morning. Can everybody hear me okay? All right. Uh, my name is Nia Murray. Uh, I am the programs coordinator with Neighborhood Recovery Community Development Corporation, and we want to welcome you all to today's a month of service presentation of Coffee and Conversation. Um, and um, uh, Neighborhood Recovery is one of the partners in a month of service. Uh, included in that partnership is also the City of Houston's Department of Neighborhoods. And of course, everybody knows Ms. Myra Hippolyte uh, also is a Lone Star Legal Aid, the Earl Carl Institute, Houston Volunteer Lawyers, Houston Bar Association, uh, Harris Central Appraisal District and Harris County uh, Tax Assessor Collector's Office. And together we make up a month of service. And basically what a month of service is, is a collaboration of these eight different organizations. And we come together on a monthly basis and offer a variety of different workshops, resources, information available to the community uh, in regards to um, community empowerment, um, asset building, asset protection, and maintaining of generational wealth. Um, one of the... Uh, the, the programs that has been included is the city of Houston's uh, uh, Coffee and Conversation. And Coffee and Conversation, of course, you guys have know have gone on for, for quite a few years already. Um, but the Month of Service uh, Collective, uh, we've been uh, presenting and doing workshops together uh, for the last several years. Um, we decided to come together to create a larger impact and to reach more people in the community, considering that we all service the same community. So we wanted to make sure that we actually um, come together collectively and go out into different neighborhoods and offer a, a month long set of workshops and resources and that information for those communities that are underserved, um, that are underreached. Um, so for you know, so many of those folks that really don't know a lot of information or have any information about resources, where to go, how to get inform, you know, how to get assistance, um, especially as it relates to maintaining the generational wealth. Uh, so we do the wills and estate planning, clearing title for inherited property. Uh, we do first-time home buyer education, uh, financial capability related to budgeting, savings, credit, so on and so forth. So there's a variety of different things that we offer on a monthly basis collectively so that we can get that information out to the community. So uh, that's basically what a month of service is. And on behalf of a month of service, again, I want to welcome you guys and thank you all for coming out and joining us uh, this morning for Coffee and Conversation. So uh, we hope that you guys come back for, for other uh, uh, workshops that we have. Uh, again, this is the first that we're actually doing uh, hybrid, virtual, and in person. So we're testing this out to see also what your feedback is. You know, are you interested in doing more in-person meetings and things of that nature to kind of get back out into the community? Do you like the virtual? The virtual has allowed us the opportunity to reach many, many, many more people throughout the city of Houston. Uh, last year was well over 40,000 people that we actually reached around the state. Uh, even some people outside of the state, military personnel that are that are uh, stationed overseas have have tuned in to our presentations and and you know to get the information. So uh, so you know your feedback is very important. Let us know. If there's any um, resources or classes or workshops that we don't currently offer that you all may be interested in, then please let us know and uh, provide us with that information. So with that being said, I'm gonna go, go ahead and turn it over to Ms. Myra Hippolyte uh, and we're gonna get started with the presentation. Oh, I also want to make sure that I give the disclaimer that um, we are recording. It is live uh, on our social media platform right now. Um, the link for the recording of this session will be sent out to everyone that actually um, uh, registered, as well as somebody that wants to just go back and view the presentation. So we we ask and we encourage everybody to be as interactive as you'd like to possibly be. Please feel free to ask whatever questions it is that you may have. However, we want to protect your privacy as much as we possibly can. So we ask that you don't give any personal detail information about your residence or 
exactly, you know, I live at such and such address or whatever, because everybody's going to get that information and we don't want that information out there. So, so try to keep your questions to be as general as you possibly can. So that way that information does not get out there. So, but if you guys do have any questions, please feel free to ask um, whatever it is that you may have. So thank you guys very much. Thanks, Ms. Mann. Thanks, Ms. Mann. We're going to We don't hear. Thank you. The representative will have one minute to answer the question. And when Ms. Madison says, stop, then that representative sits down and says, thank you. This is a very informal process. This is not a town hall. This is not a CIP meeting. This is not a council meeting. This is a process where you can meet your different department representatives and get to know them personally. Uh, this is also our first coffee and conversation in person uh, since 2019. So our next one will be in Acres Home. It's always on the fourth Tuesday of each month. So if you are want to know when it is scheduled, uh, you can go to the City of Houston Department of Neighborhoods and look at our schedule, as well as you can go to nrcdc.org org and and look at their calendar and you can register to view the uh coffee and conversation virtually so we're going to have them both that's what a hybrid meeting is all about is a hybrid is when you're attending per in person as well as uh conducting it virtually this is our first time and then each one of your tables you'll see a qr code and in, on virtually, you will be receiving a survey from uh, the Month of Service Partners. We want you to fill them out and let us know what worked, what didn't work, and what you would like to see next time. Um, as you all know also, I can talk. So on behalf, I'm gonna be quiet and let Mr. Richard come up. So on behalf of Mayor Sylvester Turner and Director Takasha Francis, we wanna welcome you to the Month of Service and the City of Houston Department of Neighborhoods Coffee and Conversation. Today's presenter is from the Solid Waste Department, Mr. Richard Gwynn, and we'd like to thank him. But first, Mr. Gwynn, I apologize. Would all the City of Houston Department representatives please stand up? We want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule uh, to be here. Thank you. Now, uh, thank you, Mr. Gwen. Um, Ms. Richard, would you come on up? Thank you. She keep, she keep calling for Mr. Wynn. I, I kept looking around for my father. Anyway, good morning, everybody. It is an honor for me to be here to speak to you as your main speaker, uh, your main uh, presenter. Uh, once again, I'm Richard Wynn. I'm with Solid Waste Management Department with the Community Outreach Program. It is so nice to see everybody here this morning. Uh, for those people who are at home, you're missing out on a beautiful facility here. Um, donuts and coffee also. Oh, smell great. And those um, that are here today, I'm surprised the two front tables are empty. I know I took a shower this morning. 
Um, so I don't know why they're empty. But anyway, um, you see here the logo on my shirt? S W M. That's not just solid waste management, folks. It's super women and men. Because we moved mountains. We moved mountains. After Harvey, we moved a hundred million tons of trash and debris from your neighborhoods. So um, kudos to uh, those uh, working in the field during those time. They worked practically 24 hours a day. So anyway, <coughs> excuse me. Um, solid waste management. We are one department with three functions. You don't know about, you didn't know about that, did you? Okay, first function, sanitation. Of course, we have to remove the trash from your home, your neighborhood, the city. You clean out the clutter in your home, we clean out the clutter in your front yard. So um, safety is, let's just say, we don't clean out the trash debris that are uh, sitting on the sidewalk. The kids going to school, they'll have to step off into the street, into the traffic. That's dangerous, right? So we gotta move all that trash. And then um, health. Now, if that trash doesn't get removed, guess what? You, we're gonna attract rodents, um, snakes, uh, insects, even bats. Oh, bats are rodents, right? So, um, and you walk by there and you smell that nasty smell from the trash, you're gonna get sick. So yeah, that is a health issue. So again, Solid waste management, one department, three functions, maybe more. I can't think of anything yet, but you know, you know me. Um, I'm, I'm always thinking, so I'm always going to come up with something. Yes, ma'am. Miss Hiplake gave me an hour. I said, that's not enough, because I love to talk. <laughs> anyway, um, so um, I hope you can see up front here, the trash fact is the department service guide. You can also download this from the city uh, website. And uh, basically, it's going to tell you a lot of things. There's a lot of information uh, on there. Um, so, um, if there's anything going on, we missed uh, your trash or something that, 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 that you don't know of, go ahead and call 311 and report that, okay? Let me just go through the trash fact real quick for you, if I can maneuver this. Uh, oop, oop, oops. All right. First page of the trash fact. Uh, you can see that um, we ask that you put your waste out at uh, 6 p.m. the night before or 7 a.m. the night of. Don't put the, your trash out too early, especially heavy trash, because if you put them out too early, um, two, two things are going to happen, or too early or too late. Two things are going to happen. We won't be able to collect them. Okay, and then somebody's gonna come out, come by and see that pile of trash and they're gonna add to your pile and it becomes an illegal dump and that's not good. The second thing is you might even get a citation. Yes, um, the city is gonna, uh, the, the department is gonna start doing that but I'll talk about that a little later. And if you can see here down, see here. I'm not doing a good job of this. No, you're doing good. Actually, I'm not, not doing a good job of maneuvering it. Okay. Now, when you place your carts, uh, make sure that they are, they are at least three feet apart. The reason why is that our automated um, uh, collectors, uh, um, automated uh, trucks, they come out with a huge arm. It's big. And if you put them too close, uh, uh, there's a chance that, that the, uh, the driver, uh, he or she might knock the second can over and we won't, won't be able to, to collect that can. So set them apart. That way they have a lot of, uh, a lot of room, a lot of um, space to maneuver. 
and then to the um, go ahead. Uh, and then and, and you see that we have an app that we just started probably a, a, a little more than a year ago. Um, it's a great thing. You can download it onto your um, uh, devices, either your phone or your tablet. It, it's really nice. Just imagine um, you can put in your address and it will tell you when your service day is and it can also give you reminders. Just imagine walking around and suddenly <laughs> your phone dings and you open it up and says, tomorrow is your heavy trash day. Hey, I totally forgot. Thank you for reminding me. So that app is really, really good. Um, so, to, so um, I lost it. <laughs> so um, yeah, if you get a chance, uh, download it and then and, and play with it. There is also a game on there for the kids to play with, and you you can learn about uh, recycling also. For those folks that are here, I also have some um, printed out. Um, trash facts on the table out there. Grab yourself a copy. I have them in English and in Spanish. Um, again, you can also download uh, the trash fact from the city uh, website. A little bit tech technical difficulties, but we'll be... <laughs> There we go. Remember Steve Urkel? Did I do that? I didn't do that. Uh, okay, moving on, second page. Um, okay, tree waste and junk waste. It's, we, we have started, oh, well, I'm, I'm sorry, we, we did this about, few years ago, it used to be that we collect junk waste every month. Now it's every other month. We divide it into um, even number month and odd number month. On the even number month, we'll take all your junk waste. On the odd number month, we'll just take your tree waste. How can you uh, remember what month and what to put out? Um, I came up with a kind of a you know, uh, mnemonic. On the odd even month, which is what, January, March, you know, one, three, five, you put out your kitchen sink and they don't come and pick it up. You stand there scratching your head and you said, that's odd. Why wouldn't they pick up your, my, my, my kitchen sink? Because it's not junk waste month. So you gotta, you, you, we won't collect that. So it's just tree waste, meaning uh, branches, um, law, and you, you know, trees that have been cut down. Um, and on, on, on the even month, you put out your kitchen sink and they'll even take that away. How's that? Is that, is that easy to remember? There we go. So um, again, but, <laughs> but there is a, a, re a restriction. We can only take up to eight cubic yards of your, um, of your waste. Now on the even month, on a junk waste month, we will take away some of the uh, tree waste. However, when you put them out, don't mix them. That way we can take the tree waste and take them to um, living earth and have them mulch down to uh, grind it down and make, make them into mulch. The, the junk stuff will be um, going to the landfill. That way they don't um, contaminate each other. Now, um, the eight cubic yards, um, how, how, how you figure how much is eight cubic yards? Just imagine two, Pick up truck beds. If you can fill up two pickup tr truck beds, that's eight cubic yards. Okay. Now, the city also provides you with um, neighborhood deposit centers. There are six around this, uh, uh, the city. You are allowed to use the facility um, four times a month. You can use them all four times in one day or once a week. Um, however, but when you go to the, these facilities, make sure you bring your ID and uh, a utility bill. It's just a way for us to, 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 to uh, know that you actually live in the city because in the past we have had a lot of people coming from outside of the city and coming and dumping um, uh, in our facilities. And that's not fair to you because you pay taxes to, to use these facilities. So 
Um, that's the only reason why we ask for that. I know um, sometimes it's an inconvenience, but that inconvenience um, protect us. All right, let's go down here. All right, curbside recycling. You you are um, the city provides you with a green can. Recycling. There, okay. Um, it's an it's the same size as 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 your um trash can. Um, when you recycle. Please be sure that your um, the items you put in there are loose. So don't put them in plastic bags. Uh, make sure they're separated, clean and dry. The reason why we ask that you rinse out some of the uh, materials uh, in, inside the um, containers, like milk jug or uh, maybe um, uh, jam or jelly in the jars, is if you don't rinse them out, there's a chance that you can attract a lot of bugs and it's 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 it makes it hard for the, the the people to collect them. And you know they're sitting in a truck. Who knows? Their bugs might be crawling around and getting all over their clothes. And and that's that's not nice. Scratchy all day long. Um, and then there are things that you can um, put inside the uh, uh, recycling cans. It's real easy to remember. Two letters: PC, as in personal computer, paper, and plastic. Cans and cardboard, P, C. And then we have we take glass also. Glass, um, especially the bottles and the jars, because they're thicker glass. If you broke your windows, don't put that kind of glass in there because those those things are sharp, uh, too sharp, and they will um, uh, cut up uh, the 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 materials inside. And 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 you know we don't want them pre-shred before they get to the uh, facility. Uh, they will go all over the place. Um, and we are. We also have um, ser uh, environmental service centers. There are two of them uh, uh, within the city that you can come and um, uh, drop off your um, ha hazardous household materials like um, paint and oil and things like that. Um, okay. And West Park Recycling Center will uh, is is a drive up facility. You never have to get out of your car. Just pull up. Um, and they'll take it from your inside of your trunk or the back of your truck. We also have a reuse warehouse. This is a very fine idea. All the things that that you don't use but are still in good shape, come and donate to the reuse warehouse. And then from the reuse warehouse, we'll donate them back to any nonprofit organization. And it'll turn it into something they can use, you know chandeliers, um, doors, windows, um, uh, even um, carpet. Sometimes we take some furniture, uh, especially office furniture. Those are great to um, reuse. So that way those things don't end up in landfills. And uh, I, I think that's a, that's a great, great idea. Now, when... Oops. Okay. When you place your car, I can't, I can't get this down further. A little, okay. When you, when you place your carts, make sure your carts are placed far away from mailboxes, trees, utility lines, um, and, and your vehicles. That way, again, the drivers have room to maneuver and that they don't damage your properties. Okay, the um, the newest uh, initiative that the city um, mayor's office, solid waste management, and uh, contractors come up is a one clean Houston um, program. It's just a pilot program right now. We're, we're trying to test it out. So perhaps in in the future we may may be able to build more. Um, depositories for uh, us to use. And this coming Saturday, the 29th, is called a free dump day. It's almost like using your depositories. However, we are um, working in conjunction with Republic Waste at our two local um, landfill. The 
one is um is on Macari, and the other one is in Fresno. Uh, uh, Blue Ridge, Blue Ridge, and you can come and take your um junk to those uh, landfills, and it it acts just like of a uh, a neighborhood depository. So bring your your uh, IDs and your utility bills, and um you know get rid of your junk that way. That way, it doesn't end up being illegally dumped um in in front of your home, and you might even end up with a citation for that. And um, basically, I love to talk about recycling. It is very, very important to me. It's very important to all of us, actually. Um, why do we recycle? You know, I hate to say this, but we are leaving a pile of trash to our children and our grandchildren. So if we don't recycle, we're gonna end up ruining the environment. And and I don't know about you, but this is the only planet that that can hold life. Um, I'm I'm not ready to go to Mars yet. Uh, I don't even want to go to go to the moon. Just imagine, um, on this Earth, you're walking around freely. You can breathe the air without all that heavy equipment. N you know, no gigantic helmet and tank and you can run around all day long. Nice, free air, clean air. On a hot summer day, you wanna go swimming? Jump into a pond, beautiful. On Mars, there's no body of water, none that I know of. Now, when you get hungry, pluck an apple from a tree, eat from there. On Mars, no plants, none that I know of. And the last thing, cover your ears if you want to hear this. You should be scared. Guess what astronaut drinks in, in, uh, in, in space, people? Recycle urine. Now, save this planet. Stay here. We got all these nice, clean, fresh things to consume. So are you scared yet? I am, because uh, I'm worried. <laughs> um, but of all the things that we can recycle, um, if you don't recycle paper, you won't break my heart because we can always plant more trees and trees are good for the environment. Trees are good for all of us because you will get the, the clean air to breathe. Um, if you plant trees, guess what? You're gonna get, you know, thank you postcard from the squirrels and the chipmunks. So I uh, saved this planet. Now, uh, let's see, you don't, if you don't, again, if you don't uh, recycle paper, that's fine. But one thing that I stress, I stress um, that if you only recycle one thing, make it plastic, please make it plastic. Why? Plastic is an oil derivative. Did you know that? Oh, plastic comes from oil. So if, we're, if we keep recycling plastic, we don't have to drill some you know, for oil so often so much. So OPEC can go away. Um, and not only that, Plastic, in my opinion, save lives. Why do I say that? Plastic saves lives. Yes, when you go on a cruise, you know, on, on the ship, on the boat, you know those you know, your round lifesaver uh, things? If you fall into the water, guess what it's made of? It's, it's plastic, okay? And then, and, then, and then most importantly, you see these police officers sitting there right here? Yes, the vest that they wear, they go to work, to protect them, guess what it's made of? Plastic, folks, plastic. There's no metal in there, okay? Just imagine your police officer running around all day long with a, with a metal plate. It's hot and heavy. No, uh-uh. Um, it's, what, what it is, is it's plastic, melted down, and weave into a very thin fiber, and they, and then it, it, it's uh, made into a material um, about a couple inches long, thick, it's called Kevlar. And Kevlar acts like um, a sponge. So when a bullet comes out, it spins at a very, very high velocity. And when it hits a Kevlar, the Kevlar is gonna catch it. It's gonna get caught in there. Just like you take a high speed drill and drill into a, a, a plastic bag. It's gonna catch it and it's gonna stop the bullet from penetrating the skin and puncture the flesh. Guess what? 
um, you're going to have a bruise, but you live, correct? So Kevlar is plastic, it's important. And guess what? Kevlar was invented by a woman. I love women. Okay. <laughs> Kevlar was invented by a woman. So um, recycle plastic, please. Um, uh, let me see. I, I lost my train of thought. Okay. Now, I, I always, I always uh, uh, get so excited when I talk about Kevlar. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, because because my brother is a deputy sheriff with Harris County, so he has to wear that vest too. So I think I think um, uh, Stephanie Kolak for um, inventing Kevlar. Now, um, the the city, I mean the department, uh, solid waste is about five hundred employees strong. Um, it used to be a, a thousand, um, and then lots of things happened, and then uh, COVID happened. So now we're down to only 500, but we are looking for more employees. So we're looking to add probably about another 300. So um, on the table back there, I have um, information. We need drivers. We need people with CDL license, um, class A or class B. Come drive with us. Um, don't let your CDL go to waste. When you drive for the city, guess what? You start in the morning, and then when you finish at home in the evening, you're gonna be sleeping in your own bed, on your own pillow. You're not gonna be stuck in some seedy hotel out there in the uh, interstate, okay? So um, we may not be as competitive as Walmart or um, Amazon, but the package is beautiful. You get, uh, you get a lot of uh, um, uh, incentive uh, and, and plus they're giving about, I, I think a $3,000 bonus pay right now. So look into it. If you know anybody who needs a job and has a CDL, come and train uh, and, and work with us. Um, I, you, you'll be amazed that uh, it's, a, it's a very rewarding um, uh, job because, you know, the kids, they love to see their, their garbage truck. They're, they're out there every morning waving at the driver. So, you know, you're somebody's hero. Um, and um, earlier when I talked about um, re, uh, uh, trash placement, when you put your trash out too early or too late, you're gonna, you, you might get a citation and the department just hire six um, community, I, I mean, code enforcement officers um, and they'll be out there checking. And if, if there is violation, they will write you um, citation. So um, the coast, uh, code enforcement officers, um, they'll, they'll have the uniform from the city on. You can identify them by their uh, city uh, IDs and they'll have a badge just like this, okay? And um, they, they, uh, they uh, will help you. Now, I am one of those um, enforcement officers, but I, I, I tend to think of myself as a, as a code enforcement informer rather than officers because I'm a nice guy. I will, I, I will go out there and tell you, hey, this is not right. Um, let's clean this up. Let's move this over here. Let's do this. And um, that way, I won't have to bring out the big pen. You know how this size, you know, that's, that's mightier than 10, sword, than 10 swords, right? So yeah, don't, 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 uh, get yourself into that, that situation where you have to uh, uh, get a citation because uh, going to court is no fun, okay? It's not fun. So um, if you have any questions, call the department, call 311, ask um, uh, anybody from in the department, they'll help you out. And that way we can avoid all that, you know, hassles. And finally, um, I uh, just want to make sure that uh, you have, uh, all your answer, uh, your questions answered. Uh, I'm gonna go into stealth mode and blend into the uh, audience. Just come and ask me, and uh, uh, we'll uh, we'll guide you to the right places. So uh, I thank you for listening to me and putting up with my ornery jokes. And uh, again, um, I, I hope you have a great, great morning. And please um, mingle and talk to your um, uh, the different uh, department representatives. Thank you. Thank you.
thank you, Mr. Wynn. We, we really always appreciate you. Uh, one of the things that we're going through now is the question and answer section that the community has now a chance to take and ask one question, one minute, and the representatives will have one question, one minute to answer. Ms. Madison is waiting to tell you to sit down, okay? So please make sure you stand up and ask questions because Ms. Madison was a teacher and, and we all know Ms. Madison and then we know Ms. Scarlock, Scarlock. So if they get into a situation, just ignore them. No, I'm joking. So on behalf of the city of Houston, it's now time for you to raise up your hands and ask questions. Yes. Thank you. Okay, take it real quick while I'm muted over here and take it off. Okay, so my time starts now. Yeah. Yeah. So first of all, I want to really thank you for being here and you know, do a fabulous job. I do have a question. So we have um, a street right you now. I live in the Heights and it's called 11th Street. What they did on 11th Street was they have um, taken away a lane of traffic and made a bike lane. And so the bike lane is adjacent to the curb. So now the people that live in the houses there, they're now putting the recycle bins and the uh, trash cans in the bike lane. And we have asked before this was done, what do we do? Is that the proper place? Can the trucks reach over the bike lane? Do they have enough to do that to grab? Like, and anyway, this has been going on now for two months. So on Thursdays, you know, the lanes are completely taken up. So that, and also, does Solid Waste do anything about cleaning the bike lanes that are everywhere right now? I know that y'all just bought some sort of a sweep screen from, I'm sorry. But it's, but it's not about the bike lanes and how to get them free. So, okay. so thank then, you. Let, let me answer the second part. No, uh, solid waste won't clean the bike lanes. Okay. Um, that's probably um, public works. Um, but, uh, but don't, don't, don't uh, quote me. Uh, uh, but the uh, placement of the cans, yes, the arms will be able to reach over the, the bike lanes because there's really no uh, obstructions there it's just air uh so that's fine yes please go don't don't put the cans on the bike lane that will impede the, the bike traffic but um uh not only that but you might end up with a citation because your can is not placed properly the arm is quite long. It's, it's a long. It's quite as long as this, this table, and the white lane is probably about half the size of the table in West River. Um, well, but it will reach over. Trust me, it will reach over. Next question. Uh, Brian, so everyone can hear you. Thank you. My question is going forward. Do you all plan to have a, a program for recyclable bags? Because we know that the bags, the plastic bags, cannot be put in the recyclable. But going forward, do you all plan to provide a service for that? I'm going to support that. So thank you. That is a wonderful question. Thank you. Um, yes, yes, and yes. Now, right now, um, curbside service, we still don't have the ability to take those uh, grocery bags. Um, so, but right now we have a program that we only have two facilities that will take them. It's um, the one, one is in Kingwood, the other, the other one is at North Bay, at the depository of North Main. The reason is that uh, we are in work, working in collaboration with uh, ExxonMobil and Cyclics. We only have those containers at those facilities. Hopefully, in the future, we'll have more. What it is, it is a program we call Bag It and Bring It. So you'll be able to put everything in one bag, 
Um, the, the wonderful, wonderful thing, thing is, is yes, yes, any kind of plastic, including the styrofoam that we, you know, we always frown upon, will be on the table. And even stuff like uh, your potato chip bags. It, it's, it's great. Any kind of plastic, because we're going to go from the poly, um, poly to mono. So all that plastic will be recycled. And it, it's going to help clean my city. And I'm really, really thrilled about that. Um, it's going on right now. Yeah, it, it's going on right now. My question is for renters. We've noticed that a lot of renters are being eviction their furniture has been put out on the side of the street on the curbside, and owners are not taking responsibility of picking up that. They're waiting on the city to pick it up. We've had our trash to be picked up week two, week three, all that heavy trash is there. It's still sitting there. How can we call in for the citation to come out? You know, the proper name to come out and check. How can we find out? We know that the 311 uh, reference number is there and they'll say closed. But it's not closed because the trash is still sitting on the street and not, you know, where people are digging through it. How can we find out and get in touch with you in order to get this completed? I can answer that. Hi, my name is Myra Hibbley, and I'm with the City of Houston Department of Neighborhoods. One of the things that you have to understand when you call 311, they're just a database. That's all. They just take the information. They are not the ones that call the department and say, You have to remove that draft right now. They'll just refer the request to that department. So when you're talking about the Department of Neighborhoods, call 311. When you see that it's closed, it's not closed in the Department of Neighborhoods because the Department of Neighborhoods creates their own service request number. So when you call 311 and it says, well, it's closed, there should be a service request, a, a, a project number attached to that. And if it's not, then you need to call the Department of Neighborhoods at 832-394-0000. Zero, zero. Again, the number is 832-394-0600. Now make sure you have a service request number. Make sure you have call 311 because the first thing they're going to ask you, did you call 311 and what is your service request number? A lot of the community calls and says, 311 is not doing anything. They're not taking care of my concerns. But 311 is only a database, a telemarketing sort of, they take the information and they pass it on to the department. That's it. Now, if you call a complaint and you, within a month and you don't see anything happening with that concern, call 311 again and tell them, hey, I'd like to expedite my concern and I want to talk to a supervisor. Guess what happens then? You talk to a 311 supervisor and you tell I don't want to expedite my concern. This was created by Mayor Sylvester Turner. When you say I want to expedite my concern, they will refer your concern to that department and within 48 hours that department has to contact you and give them up. That's called expediting your concern. So when you're saying 311 didn't answer, didn't take care of your concern, or the project was closed, it was only closed because that department created their own service request number or project number, whatever computer system they have. Yes, ma'am. One more question, and that's <laughs> because I, I'm very concerned about my seniors who because I walk my name because I'm a liaison in my area. And they're concerned about they haven't done anything this week and it's been done that week. How can they see that number? And I know you're saying that information, but how can they see that number on their email? And I don't see it. And that's my concern because they're asking a lot of questions. What they can do is call 311 
and tell them they want to expedite their concern. And, and then 311 will refer that concern to that department and then they will call, contact them and stuff. Yes. Hi, my name is Sonia Melton. I am a liaison um, with 311. I am the liaison for the Solid Waste Department. And to uh, just piggyback on what uh, Ms. Hillfly was saying, uh, she was saying expedite, but it's actually escalate. That's it. <laughs> escalate. 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 Yes. Escalate. Yes. 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 So if you have a, um, a concern, as you, know, you were speaking about, and uh, you see it closed, and you can always, my name is Sonia Melton. Um, I can give you my phone number. And this is my favorite line. It's and that's what talking conversations all about. 395 9388. Yes. And what is your name again? Sonia Melton. Repeat the number, please. I'm a liaison uh, for 311. And your phone number again? 832. 395-9388. And guys, guess what? This is what talking conversation is all about. Good morning. My name is Shanae Drake Gilbert Hines. I'm a liaison in 311 as well. And as Melton Hill just saw the ways, I have a problem in neighborhoods. So when you call, based on your concern with your complaint, as the Mr. Light has indicated, call the one rep. It's a report. Once the report is put in, as she stated, it goes to where it is a month later. You don't have an expedited escalation done in grade one one. Call us back. There is a lead, there is a master that is there that is to escalate that service request for you. If you see nothing is being taken care of, then they can get it over to me. The supervisors in 311, they are there to help pertaining to it. But sometimes we get citizens that call on the request for a supervisor and they don't specify supervisor in what department. And that makes it harder sometimes on the agents pertaining to it because we don't want to be combative with the city at all. We want to make sure everything is flowing correctly, properly. So my name is Andrea Gilbert Hines. My number is 832 395 9394. Yes, ma'am. Last name is hyphenated Gilbert, G I L B as in boy, E R T, hyphen H I N E S. First name is spelled S C H, N as in Nancy, E D R I A. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so, guess what, guys? We learned two things. You call 311, you want to escalate your concern. Now we learn one more thing that the department, the 311, has a representative. When you call it in to escalate your concern, 311 has a representative that will handle your concerns, specifically when you're escalating your concerns. Now we have someone for the Department of Neighborhoods. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kishma Walker. I'm a code enforcement officer in the Department of Neighborhoods. And to add on to your complaint, when you call in heavy trash, is that the curb line? Well, let's come to our department. Excuse me. We create a Don case number. When that Don case number is created and an inspector goes out, if we issue a citation, then yes, the case is closed because that's what Don has done. We, we issue a citation, we leave a door knocker that says removed from curb line, we check the pickup date. And after that, it goes back to solid waste, picking it up. That's the reason it's showing close because that means the citation has been issued. And the time is that you can always call the 832 600 number and say, hey, I called in a heavy trash. I would like to know what happened. Because there are notes in the case if the citation is issued. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Zero six hundred. Now, guess what? We learned one more thing. And what was that? Anybody remember? That when you call in a solid waste concern, heavy trash concern, and it's with the Department of Neighborhoods, once they make an inspection and they issue a citation, 
the concern will be closed. They will not go back out there again unless they receive another concern. So once you see that it's closed and the trash is still in there, then I would call 311 again and call in another concern. Am I correct or wrong? Okay, sorry. Okay. Let me add to that real quick. When you call 311, you get an SR number. Please retain that number because it doesn't, just because the SR may be closed, that doesn't mean it, it went away, it doesn't mean it, it disappeared. We can always pull that number back up and check on it. Remember, you know, when you used to go to, 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 to uh, school and we have to use a do we this whole system to look up a book? No, this SR number stays in the data system, uh, in, 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 the, in the data, and we'll be able to pull it up pretty quickly and, and check on it and say that that way, when you call back and say, hey, this is my number, they can escalate it and then they can give you another number, retain those numbers off the phone. And then make sure you email any of us, including myself, and I can just check on it for you. I called in, uh, the lady had a bunch of trash totally mattresses on her driveway. Stayed out there a whole month. The lady told me when I called in to check on it, she said, well, it's a um, drug waste problem. I said, but no, it's not. I didn't say it was that. I said it was open storage of whatever's on her driveway. So she told me to call my city house person. You the lead. I have her name. What's her name? Donaldson. 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 Well, guess what? Just think of this time. Uh, <laughs> 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 Sorry. So, if you have a problem with the and you don't get the answer that you want, you have representatives here that you can ask for specifically. Okay, for the Department of the Neighborhoods, Ms. Walker would do an excellent job. Does it come? Okay. Okay, so the person calls in and says that someone has heavy trash out over the sidewalk because the sun is on the sidewalk with the handicapped ramps. Is that even though you have maybe 100 calls before that? Then is this put into a safety or emergency situation that would be bumped up? Escalate. 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 Thank you, Ms. Nancy. It becomes an escalation when you call the Department of Neighborhoods and you ask for a division manager and you explain to them, this is what's out here. We need someone out as soon as possible. Most of our inspections are first in, first out until it becomes a priority inspection. And that's what the threat. Any other questions? Now, right now, we'd like to take this time to get each department representative to stand up and introduce themselves real quickly. So I'm going to start over here, believe me. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sun Tan. I'm a lieutenant with the Southeast uh, GRP team. Uh, we have the rest of my team here, and then including the uh, man at arms. We're going to pass the mic around. Thank you. Okay. Could you stand up because there are videos? Yeah. Uh, could LD, thank you for the mic. Uh, not exactly sure what I was supposed to say, but uh, I'm, I'm Officer Silva, Southeast DRT. We have all our team out here at the Magna College. We all work together and we're great. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I'm from Martina and the DRT team as well. Uh, yeah. I'm also the actor in the DRT. I'm also the involved in the DRT. 
Also ahead of time, everybody. Yeah, Hello, I'm also decent. I'm with Southeast Community Service UFT. I'm Mike Collins, Commander of Southeast Division. Just like to take one moment, I'll make uh, whenever I have one of these meetings, I'd like to get my cell phone number out as well and follow suit. Put 311 in. So it's 832 840 5397. And our substation is located at 8300 McAllen. Never hesitate to pick up the phone and call that number if you have anything I can help you with. Thank you. Oh, yes. And it's a Mike Collins. And uh, commander of Southeast Division, and I have my this is my differential response team here, and, and they do a fantastic job. Of course, our mission is to reduce crime and uh, really establish relationships in the community. So these are the folks that really do a lot of the great outreach. And uh, I'd like to thank each one of you for being here today as well. Hello, Sergeant Matthew Fernandez. I'm the sergeant over the uh, Southeast CRT uh, unit. I did want to give you all an email. If you have any uh, concerns, you are in the 13 or 14 district area, here you're in the center side, side. Uh, all the way down now, like 45 or 3 area, all that area. We have it all. What's that over here about the women? Go ahead. Go ahead. Share that area as well. Um, the email address is HPD and SCDS. And I used to read the title. So if you have any complaints that we can help you with, that's the email. We use that to kind of streamline it. That way we're not getting complaints in from all different directions. That way we're not doing paying work. Yep. So if you have a, a concerns within this area and the prior area of concern, uh, send it into us. Okay. If it's not a prior concern, send it to me anyway, and I can direct the proper channels. Did you say the email again? Yes, it's HPD S E C S at Houston Police Network. Good morning, everyone. My name is Angela Salif. I'm the community liaison uh, with the Mayor's Assistance Office. We're a part of the Department of Neighborhoods. We're assigned by Super Neighborhoods. So I have the Near Southwest, Greater Fifth Ward, South Park, Minitex, uh, Greater Hobby, Edgebrook, uh, Clear Lake, South Bell Ellington, and oh, South Chris, South Park, Revenue are my areas. And my co-partner here. Good morning. I'm Elder Pugh, and I cover Sunnyside, Third Ward, South Acres, and Crestmont. So if you have any any uh, issues that that you need to have addressed, let's give me a call. I'm at 832-393-4063. That's 832-393. Four zero six. And the name again? Eldridge Q. E E U G H. Thank you. Good evening, salutations from Shark Cave. I'm with uh, Senator John Whitmire, just here to listen to the concerns that I'm here. Ms. Specker, AJ Lacey, Department of Neighborhood. This is my first meeting and I'm having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think I'm most of uh, my work office to the uh, Southeast DLT uh, Community Center. <laughs> good morning. I'm Officer Harvis and I'm with the Community Service Team. And everyone wants to make any. Oh, and if anyone else is from a different department, please still be okay. Then raise up your hand or uh, a council member organization. Again, good morning. My name is Janine Ray. Over time, three one one. Can we get you on or the city? One one one. But it's a lot. If you have any questions, you know me. I'm ready to go. Or class, you know, call me. Got a call. Just don't take out the phone. It's eight three two three nine five nine three nine four. 
Hello, good morning. My name is Dwight Bash. I'm the community liaison for Section 146 of State Governor Rashawn Taylor. Hi, again, I'm Sonia Nelson uh, with Room 101, with the Agent Room 101 of the departments. I am the liaison with the city of Houston and some of these follow-up maintenance, um, Park Houston, which is formerly known as Park and Management, and also HPD. So I am glad that HPD, DRT, I don't know what DRT stood for. I'm glad that I got this information. I am going to be calling. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Reginald Gordon, better known as OG1. I'm a community liaison, recovery coach specialist, mental health care specialist. I'm here with my young people and team. We run a youth facility, a wellness youth facility on the east side, right there on the community liaison help. But I've been given the privilege and opportunity to open up the old Southern Southern on the end down here to what we need to do with recovery coach training, training brothers in the community, anger management, life skills, what we need to do with these. Group therapy, so working with young men that's coming out of the institutions in jail, that's what I actually do. And we're looking forward to working with the community in there. My name is Kishma Walker, I'm with the Department of Neighborhoods. Um, if you call the 832-394-600 number, they will send me an email that someone's trying to contact me, and I will return the call. Good morning, uh, Officer Rivera with the South DRT. Officer Alberto Bellion from the South East DRT Unit. Yeah. Good morning, introduce yourself on the Oh. And once again, I'm Nia Murray, Program Coordinator with Neighborhood Recovery Community Development Corporation. And last but not least. Again, um, I left my cards on some of the tables. Um, if you need to contact me, best way is by email because uh, the printer um, made a mistake uh, on my phone number. So please contact me by email. And please, folks, here's a really good tip for you. Make sure you get command of Collins phone number. You know why? Yeah. Because if those of you who have college girls, a college age girl that going to school, and should those fraternity boys ooze up to them and ask for a phone number, yeah. man, <laughs> college phone number. Wait, wait, what is Now, talking conversation is not over. <laughs> this is the time for you to sit down and walk around and introduce each other. And talk to the different department representatives and get to know each other personally, write each other's name down, and, and just be able to have some coffee and conversation. We initially had the presentation and we had the question and answer. Now it's time for you to just get to know your neighbors and have some coffee and conversation. Thank you. And on behalf of Mayor Sylvester Turner and Director Tasha Francis, want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. For attending coffee and conversation with the city of Houston Department of that is Oh, that's right. Okay, guys. I want to get you there, man. Thank you. <laughs>